back at the Game Tech booth here at GDC 2019. And you know, we talk about a lot of things you can do in the cloud, but what if the cloud could replicate that big bulky workstation and it would never go out of date? Well, I mean, it might go out of date someday, but that would be a big future. That's PlayStation 9 future. I'm here with Sean Looper. He's one of our solutions architects who works with completely virtualizing my entire workstation for game development. That's right, yeah. Uh, the, the main thing that we're trying to address here is this problem of having this, this hot, expensive machine underneath the desk of, of an artist. Uh, and so what we've been able to do is, is provide an end-to-end -end solution that ultimately replaces that machine and then some. We provide the ability to have a dozen machines available to any given artist for any different particular purpose, whether it be running simulations, compiling code, building game engines, painting textures, what have you. Uh, and that's, that's been a real boon for us because it's something we, we really weren't able to do before the last like year or so. Uh, and so for example here, I, I have this. But hold uh, on, oh, hold yes. on. It, that's kind of the holy grail, but yes. you know, I know my game developer friends and they're immediately already going, nope, no way, right? No, so, and, 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 that's, and that's fair. I mean, there, there are definitely caveats. One of the biggest issues has been latency, the ability to, uh, to work with a particular input device like a mouse or, or a Wacom tablet and, and, and see the, the results coming back in, in the, the real time that they would expect, the performance they would expect from a machine under their desk. Um, what we've been able to do in part because of how, um, how ubiquitous our regions are, the Amazon regions, uh, how close we are to data centers within major content creation hotspots like, um, like San Francisco and London, is, is to have the ability to say, we've solved this latency problem by giving you uh, instances, EC2 instances that are right down the street from you, essentially. And, and combining that with some of the more advanced protocols that we've gotten from Teradici uh, and the management portal within AWS, uh, it's, it's, it's really kind of pieced together the end-to-end the, the -end solution that we feel we've achieved. Uh, and, and so yeah, I think that's, that's ultimately our burden is to, is to sit in front of uh, those, those game developers, those artists, and have, have them try it out. Have them look at it and say, you know, can you tell a difference? Can you, does this meet the, the very high bar for art that artists ultimately have, um, and, and what else can we bring to the table in terms of increased productivity, access to hardware that they wouldn't otherwise have, um, the ability, like I said, to have a half a dozen workstations that are tailor-made for certain tasks uh, at their disposal to be able to switch between them uh, as, they may, as they need to for each task. Um, that sort of like cloud-friendly uh, functionality that to achieve that within a hardware-based game studio is, is so much more difficult. You have systems guys dragging machines to artist desks every yeah, day, yeah, yeah. right? I, mean, I feel like I'm almost like hearing, my initial thought was, well, you know, I walk through a development studio and I see highly specialized rigs, you know, and everybody has their setup the way they want it. Their screens, their digitizer, what, what, what have you, their hardware. Yep. And I'm thinking, well, how do you achieve that? Well, actually, it's quite the opposite, right? Like, actually, this gives you maximum extensibility because between my input sources yep. and then between what I can put on my virtual, I can actually have access almost immediately to anything? Is that what you're saying? A absolutely. I mean, obviously anything that is configured right, on, right, on there, right. but, uh, at, and, and that's not just at my, my desk. I can go home and conceivably remote into the same workstations that I was at at work. And so for a lot of artists that either need a flexible schedule or just want to check their renders or, or, or they have an idea in the middle of the night and they just can't get it out of their heads, they can do that, they can get there. Uh, and so it really opens up a lot of opportunities for flexible you know, scheduling workforces that scale up and down. Um, it, it's, it's very elastic, as we like to call it. So um, we're pretty excited about it. I think in particular, yeah. just the ability to run all of the standard applications that we're accustomed to running within content creation, like Nuke and 3D Studio Max and Unreal Editor and Photoshop. Um, and to have the ability, if you don't mind, I can show oh, you. Oh yeah, no, sure. say, you guys got to see some of this. Now, mind you, we are in the Moscone Center where about a million people are trying to go through one data pipe. Yeah. But this is pretty impressive what he's able to do here. Yeah, so I mean, in particular, the support for, for uh, Wacom tablets and all the various degrees of, of sensitivity and to be able to to be able to paint and have support for what artists are ultimately uh, uh, accustomed to in terms of, of both painting and, and tactile feedback from the Wacom tablet. Um, this is something that, that previously it just wasn't possible. Like this is the most um, sensitive device that we have as content creators to put pen to paper and then to see the result for that. And uh, we've been able to achieve, I think, a, a, a bar that allows artists, especially painters, texture painters, et cetera, to, uh, to, to not perceive a difference between what they're doing with a virtual machine and what they would expect within a, a machine under their desk. And, and like I said, that's really been the threshold that we've been trying to, to cross in order to see studios uh, adopt this kind of technology you know, ubiquitously within, within their, their content creation teams.
I mean, for sure, like I can just imagine so many ways this actually enables virtual teams, great collaboration tools. This is really cool. Obviously, Sean, a lot more stuff to get into here. Sure. Uh, we'll look forward to talking to you more as we go down the line. Full studio development, virtualized. Uh, anything else you want to throw in at the end? Uh, no, I just appreciate you uh, talking with me and uh, yeah. All right, my friend, thanks very much.